Well, my name is Caitlin. Uh, in public, I'm known as Caitlin Elizabeth. I, uh, not very well known, but some people in the Ottawa area know me for um, modeling or photography work. Uh, I'm very creative, so I really enjoy um, collaborating with other creative individuals. Um, I am 27 years old right now. I currently have two um, stepchildren from a relationship of mine I've been in for about two and a half years. Uh, Cyrus is eight years old and Rain and just turned five. I love him very much. Um, so that's a new dynamic in my life right now is being a, a new mother figure slash uh, good friend to them. Uh, but I also work full time in a restaurant as a manager. So uh, I can't refer to the exact name, but it's a, a franchise of a corporate restaurant. Uh, but it's in the fast food industry, I can say that. Uh, so very fast paced environment. Um, I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was seven years old. So, uh, I've been aware of that for most of my life and my early childhood was quite the struggle with managing my behavior and emotions and such. When were you first diagnosed with ADHD? Yeah, so uh, when it became a discussion, I say it was actually um, a bit, uh, it was suggested by one of my teachers when I was in grade three. Her name was Mrs. Isaac. I can't recall her first name, but she uh, provided me with a lot of special attention. And it was actually her who suggested to my mother in like a parent teacher conference that I could potentially be ADHD. And she suggested I move forward with um, professional help to see like a diagnosis would assist me at school because I was really struggling with my education. Um, all over the classroom, I had to sit right next to the teacher's desk because I would be constantly disrupting other students. But uh, I'm very thankful that she did that. I didn't realize at the time how much of an impact that she would have on my life, but uh, it was because of her that I got my diagnosis. My mom was a very young mother. She had me when she was 16, so it wasn't even on her radar that I could be potentially, um, you know, struggling because of a learning disability. Uh, she was surprised at first, but she, she went ahead because she wanted the best for me and, and uh, make sure I got all the assistance with my education needed. While I was having problems making friends because some people kind of considered me a bit crazy um, because I was having some difficulty controlling outbursts of emotional behavior. Um, so I went back to see her to, to help with dealing with that, managing my emotions and such. After receiving a diagnosis and treatment, what were your thoughts? Well, uh, medication was definitely involved. I think I started taking medication uh, around eight years old, maybe about a year after I started seeing uh, the doctor. Um, and I remember it feeling really weird about uh, how it affected my behavior. It kind of nullified me, you know, affected my appetite and such. Um, I believe when I was around 12 or 13, we made the decision to stop with medication because uh, I wanted to learn how to manage my behavior naturally without the medication influencing me at that time. Uh, and I think that was a good decision because knowing, uh, knowing how to manage my emotions and behavior without the medication influencing me, gave me kind of like a baseline to understand um, where I was and where 
the medications would assist me or, uh, sorry, I'm not really sure how to describe that. Um, but eventually later on in my teenage years, I did go back to medication after I learned how to manage on my own. I went back to um, medical assistance because, uh, well, it was difficult transitioning from high school, college. It was a different era. So <laughs> decided needed, needed more help. What are some of the biggest obstacles you have faced because of your ADHD? Growing up, I would definitely say education. It was very difficult staying focused in school. Um, I attended for grade school years, I attended Meadowlands Public School. It was uh, in the neighborhood that the Center Point Professional Services were. So that was convenient. It was close to my home as well. Um, but I actually had some really great teachers there that assisted me with that education. Um, so the teachers as well as uh, Dr. Momin really helped me through that period, but my grades, uh, it was very difficult staying on top of grades. I didn't really um, flourish with mathematics, sciences, or sometimes language. I, I really struggled with French um, or trying to learn another language in general was very difficult for me, but English I do okay with. Uh, it were grades wise, I think I managed a 70 by the end of high school, but <laughs> um, otherwise I'm, I'm more inclined to the creative hands-on subjects. I did a lot better with like wood and metal workshop or um, poetry when it came to English. Uh, Throughout high school, I was, um, I had the opportunity at, at my high school was Earl of March Secondary School. Uh, they had a dance program. Uh, I really did not like drama because I, I have stage fright. But when it came to dance, I was able to perform on stage because I wasn't speaking, I suppose. That, that was probably probably the most difficult aspect, but otherwise I suppose making friends, uh, that was difficult. Uh, my friend circle was pretty small. I kept to myself mostly, but there were some people I did let in. Um, in grade three, actually, uh, the only friends I had were from, um, were foreign exchange students really. Uh, because they were new to school, I was always so eager to make friends with them because they didn't know anything about me and they didn't have any uh, judged notions of me per se regarding my behavior. <laughs> um, but yeah, throughout high school, I did sort of come out of that shell and make a few more friends, but still more so a close knit friendship. How has your experience been in educational spaces? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I attended Algonquin College. I studied photography. Um, unfortunately, I failed twice and I'm still two classes short of my diploma, but I'm almost there. <laughs> I, I hope to return to finish those two classes so I can get that diploma. But um, yeah, I really, struggled with my education in post-secondary because there weren't uh, as many, as much assistance regarding my learning disability where in high school there was, there was more resources, but it wasn't necessarily a priority of the teachers, I suppose. There were some teachers who uh, cared a bit more and there were some teachers who they, they just have so many students that they can't really find the energy maybe to give special attention to one over the other. But I struggled more in post-secondary than I did in high school. <laughs> I, um, 
yeah, I didn't have any as much resources and there wasn't really much the professors could offer me to assist me with it. But that could also have to do with the fact that the program was a bit smaller. Um, there weren't many professors. I think we only had like eight to 10 professors for our program. And there was a maximum of 200 or 300 slots for students per semester. How has your experience been in the workplace? Yeah, well, I can speak in regards to my first workplace because I no longer work there, Um, but I worked for Starbucks. I was a barista, supervisor, coffee master. I did the works. I worked for them for just under five years uh, from when I was 17 until 22, 23 about. Um, I had a really positive experience with them in regards to, uh, well, I guess my team in particular, the people who I was working with were great. Um, They assisted me with um, social interactions because, you know, when you're at Starbucks, you have to be like always in a great mood, you know, um, remembering your guests and remembering their names, what they do for a living, their favorite beverages. Uh, So I had struggled originally with being very social and engaging with people with strangers. That was very difficult for me. I was self-conscious about how they would perceive me. Um, But the people I work with really helped me come out of my shell because no matter what happened, even if I messed up or I had like a mental breakdown and I just started crying because of something I accidentally did wrong, you know, they were always there for me and supported me. Uh, And I really flourished in that environment. And uh, I loved working there. I had a really great experience. Um, And where I'm currently working, again, another fast paced environment. Um, Not allowed to say specifically where, but it's in the food industry. And uh, I'm a manager as well there. Been working there for almost four years. yeah, really positive experience there as well. I would say we have a lot more employees compared to uh, working at a small Starbucks cafe where the amount of employees I had previously were about 20 to 30 baristas at one place and working in a restaurant, uh, we've got like 150 to 200 employees. So a lot more, a lot more people working with. Um, so don't always get along with everybody for the most part. But uh, the employees I work with on a regular basis are always supportive and positive. Um, Sometimes there's the odd customer who I have a bad interaction with where um, perhaps I was having like an off day and I accidentally spoke to them in the wrong tone of voice uh, and they perceive it negatively. Um, sometimes my manager will have to remind a customer or two that I have a disability and sometimes um, my behavior is a little out of uh, out of the uh, sometimes it's not it's not the usual it's not normally how I would behave uh, when I'm at work um, so for the most part it doesn't affect me I think perhaps it's because of the fast paced environment um, where I'm constantly moving. I'm in a position uh, personally where I'm managing the dining area. So I'm out engaging with the customers. I'm not stuck behind a counter in a stay in place position. I constantly moving around. I think that really helps uh, with me being able to uh, flourish in that environment as well. So, I don't know. Has your ADHD changed with age? Well, speaking of treatment, um, because I decided not to medicate for ADHD when I was a child. Um, when I came close, to, when I came back to that decision when I was in my late teenage years, um, we, we focused more so on the other mental health issues that I was going through 
uh, like minor anxiety issues, but more so depression uh, and a little bit of obsessive compulsive. Uh, so I'm mostly medicated for those aspects of mental health issues. Um, currently I'm not medicated anything specifically for my ADHD, um, but I don't feel the need at this time. And I'm not sure if it's because my symptoms have changed or evolved per se, or if I have just become better at managing it. I'm not really sure, um, but I don't think I need to uh, seek more medication because I'm already on quite the cocktail of prescriptions. Like, uh, I don't want any more pills. What are some of the biggest misconceptions about ADHD? One of the biggest misconceptions is that it's not a disability at all. Um, if I say that I have a disability, people sometimes want to know specifically what I have. And I don't normally have any issue, but sometimes I'm hesitant because people don't consider it to be a real disability. They consider it like a behavioral issue or something that could be um, corrected uh, per se. But although, it, although I can manage it quite well, there's still times when I don't have control per se. Um, and I can always work towards preventing something like an impulsive something from happening in the future because of my experience. Yeah, sometimes I just decide to not tell people. Um, but I've decided to be talking about it more. I think it's important to be speaking about it more. And I, I actually talk about it more at work with my customers. And sometimes I engage with a particular person who also knows somebody who has ADHD. Or one time I met a woman whose daughter was ASD um, and she was uh, nonverbal really, but uh, we had a discussion talking about my ADHD and her daughter's ASD and the similarities and differences between it. Um, and it was like a really heartwarming conversation. We, did, we even had another person who was just walking by hearing us talk about it. And they were just, they stopped and interrupted us for a moment and said how happy they were to hear us discussing about it openly and how they aren't affected per se, but they know somebody who has a disability and it's, perceived negatively or whatnot and they don't hear people talking about it enough and so that's one of the reasons why I'm talking about it more often and uh, a, the more I talk about it the more comfortable comfortable I become with people having different opinions and such and it doesn't it doesn't really matter to me or it doesn't make me as hesitant anymore to to open up because uh, another person's perspective is their reality, sure, but it's, it's not gonna affect me negatively how they feel or, or think. Do you feel ADHD has benefited your life? Yeah, I think so. I think it has, and it sure, sometimes uh, I think it negatively affected me as a child because it was so difficult growing up. Um, not being able to have as much control over myself as other people wanted me to have. Um, but I think it benefits me in the fast-paced environments. I think uh, I really do well in those environments. And I think my disability has some advantages to it where be in that environment, I, I do really well. I think that has an aspect to it, um, but negatively, no, I don't, I don't have as many negative experiences. If anything, probably just uh, prescription medications, not, not a big fan of 
how they f make me feel sometimes, sometimes negative effects uh, or side effects um, can make me a little ill. But uh, for the most part, I feel positively towards my my disability. I don't think it uh, I don't think it held me back in any way. Maybe in my ability to uh, apply myself grade wise, um, I wasn't able to keep my grades up. But uh, in the end, what what does it really matter for grades? Right? It's what we do with our uh, adult lives that most people regard us to. What do you want people watching to know about your ADHD? Well, it's not just a behavior disorder. It's a it's a it's a mental disability. It's not something somebody can turn on and off so easily. Um, it needs to be spoken about more. Uh, I think the more people share, the more people understand how it affects people. Um, 